Good day, everyone, and welcome to Filipino Science Hub Ed for another video lesson guide for chemistry. Before we head on to our topic for today, let me briefly introduce myself. I am Mark Cortez, a chemistry and physics module curator for Filipino Science Hub Ed. I am a fresh graduate of the University of the Philippines, Los Banos, under the BS Mathematics and Science Teaching Program, majoring in chemistry. Today, please join me as I discuss one of the biomolecules essential to life, carbohydrates. This module covers topics for the fourth quarter of grade 10 students. Before proceeding to the lesson proper, let us first look at the content standards and most essential learning competencies the Department of Education has suggested. Content standards, the learners demonstrate understanding of the structure of biomolecules, which are made up of mostly of a limited number of elements such as carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen. Most essential learning competencies. To recognize the major categories of biomolecules such as carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, and nucleic acids. For this module, we will be focusing on developing a deeper understanding of the structures and functions of carbohydrates. Carbohydrates are the most abundant biological molecules on Earth. As Filipinos, we consume carbohydrates in a daily basis through the rice and pandesal we enjoy every day. Most, if not all, organisms use carbohydrates as a source of energy or for structural support. We will be discussing the different functions of carbohydrates to the human body and different organisms later on. Carbohydrates derives its name from its composition. It is made up of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen with a rough ratio of one carbon to one water molecule. With carbo pertaining to carbon and hydrates pertaining to water, we get the name carbohydrates. Carbohydrates can be classified through their structures, namely monosaccharides, disaccharides, and polysaccharides. Throughout this module, we will be discussing the different carbohydrates and how each function depending on their structure. Let us start off with monosaccharides. We can derive the definition of monosaccharides based on the words it is made up of. Mono meaning one, and saccharides, an alternative term for sugars, make up the word monosaccharides. Based on these, monosaccharides are the basic subunits of carbohydrates. These carbohydrates are usually solid in room temperature and are very soluble in water due to their hydroxyl groups. The following examples are the three monosaccharides which serves as the basis for other carbohydrates. Glucose, which you have encountered the most as it is a product of photosynthesis and one of the prerequisites for cellular respiration to produce energy. Galactose, which are not normally found alone and is a component of the disaccharide lactose. And lastly, fructose, a monosaccharide commonly found in fruits and are used in most commercial drinks. Now let us take a look at these monosaccharides molecular and structural formulas. These three monosaccharides have the same molecular formula, C6H12O6, but differ in their structural formula generally compounds with the same molecular formula, such as these three monosaccharides, are called isomers. Despite having the same molecular formula, these compounds cannot be used the same way by our cells. Seen in the figure below, unlike glucose and galactose, fructose only forms a five-carbon ring compared to the six-carbon ring of the other two monosaccharides. Glucose and galactose, on the other hand, differ in terms of the arrangement of their hydroxyl groups. The difference in their structural cha changes 
their characteristics and functions accordingly. Now, when two monosaccharides are combined or bonded together, they form the second type of carbohydrates we call disaccharides. Disaccharides denoted by the use of the prefix di means two as two monosaccharides linked by a glycosidic bond. All disaccharides are water soluble and are sweet when dissolved. Disaccharides, unlike monosaccharides, are not easily used up by our cells. Due to their larger structure and components, they need to be broken down into their basic forms, which are their monosaccharide components. There are three major types of disaccharides that are made up of the three monosaccharides we have discussed earlier. These are sucrose, lactose, and maltose. Let us now discuss the characteristics and common uses of each disaccharide. Although we are commonly misled to think that the sugars we use to make our coffee and juices sweeter is glucose, what we actually use is the compound sucrose, which can commonly be derived and found from plants. Sucrose are made of the two monosaccharides, glucose and fructose. Lactose, on the other hand, are the sugars found in milk. Since our bodies cannot instantly use disaccharides, such as lactose, we need enzymes to break them for us. Lactase is the enzyme that breaks down lactose into its simpler components. Most people lack lactase and are called lactose intolerant. These people experience varying pain and discomfort from digesting dairy products since their bodies cannot easily break down and consume lactose. The monosaccharide components of this disaccharide are galactose and glucose. Lastly, maltose. In nature, they are usually present in seeds and in plants, which are byproducts of the plants breaking down on starch for energy. Maltose are usually added into the process of preparing alcoholic drinks in order to create ethanol, which gives alcohol its intoxicating characteristic. Maltose composed of two glucose molecules. The last classification of carbohydrates based on their structure are the polysaccharides. Poly meaning multiple, Polysaccharides are chains and branches of different or the same monosaccharides, ranging from 10 to hundreds and even thousands of units of monosaccharides linked together. Since they are large and heavily branched compounds, polysaccharides are mostly insoluble in water and are tasteless and odorless. There are four common polysaccharides we will consider for this module and we will classify them as storage polysaccharides and structural polysaccharides. Starch and glycogen both fall under the storage polysaccharides, while cellulose and chitin are considered as structural polysaccharides. Let's start off with storage polysaccharide starch. Starch is the stored form of sugars in plants and is made up of a mixture of two polysaccharides, amylose and amylopec. The excess glucose synthesized from photosynthesis is stored in the different parts of the plants as starch. In seeds, starch serves as the main food source during germination. Starch can also be broken down and consumed by humans and animals, but is slowly delivered to the muscles and tissues and cells of our bodies. Unlike glucose, which can immediately be consumed by our cells for energy. The second storage polysaccharide is glycogen and is made when there is an excess amount of glucose in our system. Our body stores this as the polysaccharide glycogen, which are normally stored in the liver and muscles. Now, unlike starch, humans and animals can easily metabolize glycogen when needed. One difference between starch and glycogen are the degrees of branching, where glycogen shows a higher degree of branching compared to starch, as evident in the picture below. Now for the structural polysaccharides. 
the arrangement of glucose molecules in cellulose is somewhat different to that of the previous polysaccharides, as it allows the formation of hydrogen bonds between adjacent glucose molecules, making insoluble fibrous sheets as seen below compared to the linear structure we have observed earlier. Now, cellulose is specific to plants, but polysaccharides also play an important structural role in non-plant species. For instance, arthropods, such as insects and crustaceans, have chitin in their exoskeleton, which protects their softer internal body parts. Chitin resembles cellulose in plants, but is made out of modified glucose units that bear a nitrogen-containing functional group. Chitin is also a major component of the cell walls of the different members of the kingdom. Now that we have discussed the three classification of carbohydrates, let us take a look at how exactly do carbohydrates form from monosaccharides to polysaccharides. The formation and breakdown of disaccharides along with polysaccharides involves two different reactions, condensation and hydrolysis reaction. Generally, condensation reactions are reactions that link two molecules together. This reaction normally releases one water molecule, as you can see right now, in the process. The example below shows the condensation reaction in the formation of a polysaccharide involving three glucose molecules. Hydrolysis reaction, on the other hand, occurs when bonds between monosaccharides are broken. This reaction uses or requires water in the process. The example below shows the breaking down of maltose into its two separate glucose molecules. We call the bonds created and destroyed in these reactions as glycosidic bonds or leakages. Now that we have discussed the different classification of carbohydrates based on their structures and have briefly discussed the different common carbohydrates we encounter and utilize, let us briefly go through the general functions of carbohydrates. We have already tackled some of this earlier, but let us use this as a review and recall. Energy source. Carbohydrates serves as an energy source and for an example, we know that glucose is a prerequisite for ATP production in cellular respiration. As for other types of carbohydrates, we know that these can be consumed by organisms and be broken down into its simpler monosaccharide forms, such as glucose, for further energy consumption. Energy storage. As what we have discussed earlier, excess glucose in plants and animals are directed toward its different parts. For plants, they are stored in its seeds or in its roots, while for animals, they are stored in its liver and muscles. Now, these are stored for future use in the form of the storage polysaccharides, starch and glycogen. Building macromolecules. Some glucose is converted and used by the body to create ribose and deoxyribose, which we know are essential building blocks of our DNA, RNA, and ATP. Additionally, excess glucose and glycogen stored in the liver when processed by insulin can lead to lipid synthesis. Spares proteins and lipids. When there are, is a lack of glucose, our bodies resort to breaking down proteins and lipids to produce glucose. This is why some people practice eating less sugar or carbohydrates as part of their diet, such that their bodies would use up their fats first rather than to rely on the glucose present. By having a sufficient amount of glucose in our system, we spare proteins and lipids from being used by our Bonds. Structural support. Chitin and cellulose play vital roles in the structure and overall function of different organisms. Without these carbohydrates, 
these organisms would become more vulnerable and have less integrity and form. For our additional resources, you may try out this simulation by Amrita University on detection of carbohydrates, proteins, and fats. In this simulation, you'll be able to try out different food substances and apply tests to it. In these tests, you'll be able to identify the presence of the different biomolecules present in the samples. Now, the website also includes a brief introduction to the topic of biomolecules and instructions for the simulations and real-life laboratory setups. The link for this simulation will be posted down below. For a video and for further uh, understanding on how do carbohydrates impact your health, you may watch this video by Richard Wood posted by Ted Ed. The link to this video will also be posted down below. As for our problem set, we have three basic questions that will hopefully give us a review on the carbohydrates and their structures and functions. Now, which one of the following is a monosaccharide? A lactose, B sucrose, C galactose, and D maltose. To, or, to answer this following question, we may first identify which among the choices are monosaccharide, polysaccharide, or disaccharide. Now, options A, B, and D, as we know, are polysaccharides, lactose, sucrose, and maltose. We know lactose consists of the two monosaccharides carried molecules of one glucose and one galactose, while sucrose contains one molecule of glucose and fructose, while maltose contains two molecules of glucose, which makes all three of these as disaccharides. Now, option C, galactose, is therefore the monosaccharide. What kind of polysaccharides cannot be digested by humans? A. Cellulose B. Lactose C. Maltose and D. Fructose Now, previously in our previous question, we've encountered lactose and maltose, which we can directly assume are not polysaccharides since we have identified them as disaccharides. As for fructose, we know that fructose is a monosaccharide carbohydrate. Therefore, we can also consider not as a polysaccharide carbohydrate. Therefore, our answer is A, cellulose. And if we recall, cellulose has this structure that is somewhat different from starch and glucose as it allows adjacent glucose molecules to form hydrogen bonds with each other, forming an insoluble sheet. Last question, what reaction is involved in combining two monosaccharides together? Let us emphasize on combining two monosaccharides together. A, combustion, B, hydrolysis, C, mitosis, and lastly, D, condensation. Combustion is a reaction that involves heat, while hydrolysis, as we know, is the reaction that involves or needs water in order to separate monosaccharides. Mitosis is a, a process considered in biology specifically under genetics, and can therefore be not considered as an answer. And the last option, condensation, is a reaction that involves the release of water from the linking of two monosaccharides together. So the reaction that we are looking for for this question is actually condensation. So the reaction involved in combining two monosaccharides together is the condensation reaction.
That is all for our lecture video today. I hope you were able to understand the basics of carbohydrates, specifically the functions and structures of these compounds or biomolecules and how these have an impact on our bodies and organisms. You may visit the Philsci Hub and website for further information and resources on other topics, not only in chemistry, but also physics and biology. Again, this is Mark Cortez. Thank you for watching Philsci Hub at